Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Story Corner Adventures. We're continuing with the second half of chapter 14, the second last chapter of the book The Wheel of the School, Wheel on the School, my apologies, by Maindert de Jong. And we have left two small children. This is the younger sister of Linda, of Lena, whose name is Linda, and the younger brother of Auka, whose name is Jan. We have left them trapped on the top floor, the bell loft of the uh, village bell tower. Nobody in town knows where they are, but they've also made a very important discovery as they've been out there. They have seen two storks fly over the sea and then for some an inexplicable reason, they have landed in the sea and they are standing there which is as strange to Linda as it would be to us. Now, we stopped there, first of all, because this is a very long chapter, but also because we're about to have a switch in scene. It's going to take, there's a page break, and the scene is going to change to another point of view. Here we go. There was a knock on the schoolroom door, but before the teacher could reach the door, it flew open. Lena's and Auka's mothers stood there. Maybe we shouldn't, Lena's mother started. Teacher, Jan and Linda are gone. We've hunted all over. Her voice was loud and desperate in the schoolroom. Her scared eyes sought out Lena. Lena, you've got to come. I don't know where to look anymore. You too, Auka, come, Auka's mother said timidly. Then she began to cry. We'll all come, the teacher said promptly. If we all take part, we can go out in all directions. We let them out at school time. We each thought they were next door at the other's house, Auka's mother said helplessly. Lena's mother nodded all along with her. Linda, that's Lena's little sister, was talking about storks. She's heard Lena worried about the storks in the storm, and now we're afraid they went out into the country to look for storks. And the ditches brim full along every road. They're, they're not in the village. I've been to every house. She couldn't stand still any longer. She turned and ran out of the room. Alka's mother ran after her. I'll go with the women. A man along will make them feel better, the teacher said hurriedly. Each of you take the same road you took to find a wheel, but two of you go along the sea in the dike. He rushed out after the women. It must be serious if the teacher dismissed school, Lena thought and bit her lip nervously. Yella did all the directing. She tagged mutely, almost gratefully after him when he said, you and I'll take the dike, Lena. Yella walked fast along the top of the dike. Lena ran silently on behind him. The running on the windswept dike left her no breath for talk. She just let Yella talk. He seemed to feel important in being head of a scouting party. It wasn't his little sister was gone. Yella, in his importance, seemed to lose sight of the reason they were on the dike. Now he was looking out to sea. We don't have to look for storks for the next few days, he decided expertly. The storm is still blowing itself out over England. Lena felt scornful. Yella hadn't the slightest idea which way England lay. Yella was the poorest in geography in the whole class. Then Lena felt anxious again and trotted faster. She wished it could have been Auka with her instead of Yella. Auka's little brother Jan was lost too. Uh, only then they'd both be too anxious. No, maybe it was better getting irritated by Yella, because then you thought other things than the awful thought of Linda and Jan floating in a ditch full of water. Lena threw a hasty glance up at the tower clock. Ten o'clock almost. Two hours Linda and Jan had been gone. Yella had opinions on the tower, too. The teacher shouldn't have gone off with your mother and Aukas. He should have rung the bell. Then all the country people would come to the village and they could all help look. 
Most likely, if those two kids wandered into the country, somebody working on the land would have seen them. Teacher couldn't do that, Lena said hotly. He mayn't. Why was she so irritated with Yella? You know the government sets the times he must ring the tower bell. Why, they'd all come running, thinking something terrible had happened, like a fire or something. Isn't this terrible enough, Yella argued. Two little kids may be drowned. Oh, he shouldn't have said that, Yella realized too late. He heard Lena gasp. They'll, they'll be playing somewhere, locked up or something. You'll see, he added hastily. Let's hurry, Lena said. They raced out of the village in the direction of old Dua's turned up boat. Just beyond the village, the remnants of an ancient dilapidated pier, like an old dock, jutted a short way into the sea. All that was left of it was a row of jagged, uneven piles sticking above the water like the worn teeth in an old man's mouth. But it was a temptation for children to crawl over the jagged piers to the uh, piles to the pier's end. There were dangerous gaps in the pier and jagged holes where piles were missing. Oh, but Linda and Jan were too young to go out on the pier and jump the gaps, Lena tried to assure herself. She just thought the thought, and there... <gasps> she grabbed Yella's arm and stood, pointing, speechless. Something white floated on the water in a gap between the piles. Something white. White? Oh, but the children wouldn't be wearing white. Not in winter. It was awful how you scared when you were worried and anxious. It's nothing, she managed to say. I thought I saw... She didn't explain. Her relief left her body too limp for talk. Oh, it was nothing, she gratefully said again. Yella was still looking where she pointed. Nothing? Yella said indignantly. It's storks! Drowned storks! He sprinted to the pier. Lena couldn't run after him. Her whole body felt loose and disjointed in her relief after her big scare. Oh, how that floating white had scared her! Yella had said storks! Lena found herself running. When she got to the foot of the row of piles, Yella was racing over them, jumping the gaps. Now he stretched long and flat and let himself hang down. They were drowned storks. One after the other, Yella pulled them up by their dead wings and laid them on the piles. A somber Yella came slowly back to Lena, a stork dangling wet and lifeless from each hand. Uh, and Yana said... <laughs> Yella was almost crying. But it was the newspaper that was right. They drowned in the sea and there won't be any storks. Come on, we gotta find the teacher, show him. But Linda and Jan. Oh, yes. Yella looked down at the storks. Yeah, that's right. He stood torn between his duty and his need to show the teacher and the other boys his awful find. He half stooped as if to lay the two storks down on the dike. You go on, he suddenly said. I'll run and find the teacher. I can run like anything. I'll come right back. He didn't wait. Holding the storks high by their long legs, he stormed up the dike and ran hard along the path. Lena stood, staring forlornly after Yella. She half turned as if to go on alone. Her skirts fluttered in the wind. She could hear the lonely sound. The finding of the dead storks, Yella's desertion, the loneliness of the sweep of the windy dike in the sea, it was all suddenly too much. She whirled and tore after Yella. Yella, wait! Yella! She sounded so sharp and shrill, Yella must have thought she'd found Linda and Jan, maybe drowned too. He stopped and then came running, the dead stork still in his hand. He stopped again and waited for Lena, opposite the tower.
Now there was her sister, Lena, running back to that big Yella again. Yella had run away from her with the storks. But those weren't the storks that had come flying over the sea. Yella and Lena had gone and pulled the wrong storks out of the water. Linda, up in the tower, peered excitedly between the louver boards of the big opening in the bell loft. Yella and Lena got two storks on the dike, and I see them, she told Jan. That made Jan come sliding out from under the bell. Where? he asked even before he got to his feet. Oh, you've got to peek through the boards, she pointed to the louver boards. Jan drew back. Don't be afraid. Linda mothered him. Linda will hold you up. She helped him climb. Jan clung to the boards and peered down between them to the dike. Oh, I'm high, he said, startled. He tried to scramble down, but Linda had both her hands against his back. I'm holding you, she said encouragingly. Do you see them? Yes, and they've got the two storks. They haven't either. Linda said indignantly. The other two are standing in the sea. Do you see them standing in the sea? No, Jan said. It made Linda so impatient with Jan, she decided she'd tell Lena. Lena, she called from the tower. You got the wrong ones. Linda, Linda, where are you? Lena's sharp call suddenly penetrated the high loft. I'm here, Linda yelled back. The wind soughing between the slanting boards seemed to beat her words back at her. Where? Lena yelled. Where, Linda? Tell me just where you are. I'm up here, and Yana's gone back under the bell. Can't you see me? Under the bell? Lena's words came shrieking back. Are you way up in the tower? Yes, and so is Jan. Linda, Linda, is there a piece of stone up there? Go find a piece of stone and hit the bell with it. Hit it hard. Linda looked around the bell loft. There were all kinds of broken stones that had crumbled from the great walls. She picked up the biggest one. She had to lift it with both hands. She staggered to the bell with it. But when she tried to fling it against the bell, it just dropped, it was so heavy. It hit the rim of the bell before her toes. Bong! A great gross bong came roaring out of the bell. The sound swelled and circled and filled the whole loft. It scared Jan. He came squirming out from under the bell. The sound still echoed around them in the loft. Jan looked up, listening to it. He liked it. He was laughing. It frightened Linda. What had she done? She backed away as far from the bell as possible and ran against one of the openings in the tower. How did you do it, Linda? How did you make it bong? Jan asked. The odd Linda pointed to the big stone. Then Jan picked it up in both hands and hit the bell and hit it again. Bong! Bong! Everybody would hear it all over. Now you did it, Linda cried. Everybody heard it. Are you going to get it from your mother? She pointed over uh, out the board covering opening as if to prove it. <laughs> it was so. In all the nearby fields, people stood looking up at the tower. On some of the roads, boys came running. Down one road came a man and two women running toward the tower, the teacher, and both their mothers. Now you did it, Linda whispered. Here comes your mother. Jan started to cry. Now Lena shouted from right below the tower. Jan and Linda, stay right there. Don't try to go down. The teacher is coming. Mother is coming. The teacher, both their mothers. Linda looked desperately around the loft. Your mother is coming too, she told Jan. Oh, you're going to get it. You rang the bell. You did it first, Jan wailed.
wailed. He began to cry hard. Mouth wide open, crying with all his might, he stumbled to the trap door. He took one horrified look through the opening and down all the ladders and all the deep lofts below. His crying died in his mouth. He backed away from the ladder, but when he turned, he saw the bell and began crying again. Linda cried with him. They both were crying so hard they did not hear the great iron door to the tower open far below them. They did not even hear the teacher and Yella coming up the rickety squeaking ladders until they were in the loft right below. Then it was too late to do anything. The teacher found them sitting side by side on the dusty floor, backs against the bell, crying with all their might. Well, well, he said, what a high place to sit and cry and when there's nothing to cry about. Look, Yella's here too. And Yella and I are going to carry you all the way down piggyback. Who wants to ride piggyback? Linda stopped crying and stretched her arms up to Yella so Jan would have to ride the big strange teacher's back. Just shut your eyes and there'll be nothing to it, the teacher said. Linda obediently shut her eyes. All the way down the ladder, she could hear the teacher coming on behind with Jan. The teacher was saying all kinds of nice things to Jan, but Jan just sobbed, no, to all of the teacher's endless questions. Linda kept her eyes shut. To Linda's amazement, many people had gathered outside the tower. Everybody, and everybody was asking questions. Everybody was talking at one time. It, it, it was bewildering. Now her mother scooped her up and kissed her all over her dirty, dusty face. Jan's mother was doing it too, and, and nobody was angry. And everybody was talking. Everybody was around except the two white storks. They were lying on the dike. But how could she tell Lena in all this confusion and talk that they were the wrong storks? Her mother was hugging her so tight, and now her mother was carrying her home, like a baby. So was Jan's mother carrying him. All the others came on behind, even the teacher. How could she tell Lena anything? But she was ready at the first chance to tell Lena that she and Yella had gone and found the wrong storks. A little bit of irony here, because we know something, and the tiny tots know something that nobody else in the story knows. And yet, it doesn't look like Linda's going to really get much of a chance to tell anybody about it. Because as she's being carried along like a baby, she's probably going to fall asleep like a baby and not be able to do that. Let's find out in chapter 15, Storks in the Sea, and see how it comes about that they find out. Thanks for joining me again today. See you again soon. Bye now.